What are you doing? Oh, hi. I'm going to read a letter that um, my dad made for my great-grandpa that he typed. And should I start now? Sure. Okay. It says, Dear Sam, I wanted to thank you for your letter and gift to Kyle and Jackson. I hope that we will be able to see you again this summer. Tentatively, we will be in Florida during the last two weeks in July. We will be flying into Orlando visiting Jane and her family, then driving to South Florida when I have an exact date I will call you and make a plan. Jackson still talks about you. I think he finds the idea of having a great-grandfather romantic. I was born in Sweden. Sweden. I was uh, seven. I was born in 1907. Sweden. He his work was building monuments. You know these monuments that you yeah. see of horses and people and soldiers and whatnot. That was all. That was his life's work. Came here in 19, 13 or 14. We brought the bicycle home, and I rode around with it for a few days. And one day, a young fellow my age said, could I have a ride? And I said, sure, take a ride, ride around the block and bring it back to me. I never saw the bicycle again. Oh. And I used to be the booking. I could type the bills. And we used to do work for people like the Neil Cadillac, the Packer, the locomobile. My father could do anything with his hands. And in those years, they didn't have spare parts for automobiles. In those years, if you smashed up a fender, that was the end of it. Now my father could take that fender, put it back. Then the biggest thrill I had with him, he used to build racing cars. Really? And the racing cars, when he got through with them, was taking flat sheets of metal and building that body into one piece. 1927, I was 21 years of age. How old was she when you met? How old was she? Yeah. She was a couple of years older than I was. That didn't make any difference. Uh, Margo was born in St. Agnes Hospital in Philadelphia. Dr. McGlynn was the one that uh, brought her into this world, and he was paid $50 for the delivery. Linda was breathtaking. Mm -hmm. Margot was also very uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. She never a bit of problem with either one. And the basic training we took was very rugged. I kept up with it very well. We were taught how to build pontoon bridges, work as an engineer. And for days, we would lay out in the snow. Oh, wow. And it was so cold there that we wore three types of gloves. In fact, Margo went to work for the government oh, wow. I mean, in Olympia. She was uh, 16 to 18. And Margo just was a very, very normal child. Never any problem, 
never any trouble. Always good grades at school. Really? Then she went to college. In the later years, my wife always traveled with me. Mm -hmm. I never went uh, alone. She was a great collector of art. And the first day of New York, we'd always go to the Metropolitan Art Museum. Oh, nice. Because we were members of that, and also members of the Museum of Modern, Modern Art. Mm -hmm. It's on uh, 52nd or 53rd Street. Mm -hmm. The Art Museum, and learned how to make pottery, and from there, started to paint a little, and got very good. From Cincinnati, we moved to Florida. And there, there I became president of Miss Frederick company of Sarah Fredericks had a store at the Fountain Blue Hotel, which uh, Linda managed. Had a store at the Doral Hotel, which Margo managed. This was New York 1964. The celestial strip mall, sprawling and noisy. A jumble of art, commerce, and entertainment that somehow turned chaos into a charm. in her cancer, which spread all over her body. There was no way they could uh, save her. And she passed away. And that's the story of Margot. You don't want this one, do you? No. no she likes it. Well, I'm it would, thinking about having it. You're thinking yeah. about having it? <laughs> hey, well, you think. I feel like having it. Right? Then, then you got it. Oh, that's it. Oh, I live in a big house right on the ocean. Oh. Go visit him real fast. <laughs> you live right on top in the middle of the ocean. Right up here. The ocean is here, and I live here. I never saw the bicycle again. Oh. Never saw the bicycle again. My father never bowled me out. He just said, let it be a lesson. When you have something that's yours, hold on to it. <laughs> Don't let it go.